Uh, Sarah Good. Majesty. Coming, coming. Get him up! She's here. Her Majesty's coming. Go to ourselves. Place is wanted now. That don't look to me like your Majesty. Look to me like the Marshal. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. He got in for me. I'm going home. Hey, Satan, that's so old coward. <laughs> Take me home, devil. Take me home. Now, you tell him I'm going to Devon. You tell him. Marshal, what did Reverend Hale buy? We're towards midnight, I think. What's he about here? He has no one that will hang me. Praise the Indeed, that man have no authority to enter here, Marshal. Why do you let her in? Why, Mr. Parrish commanded me, ma'am. Are you drunk, Marshal? No. I have been at night and have fire. Fetch, Mr. Parrish. I know. This bitch just stand to this place. I just have quite a few people out for you. Be very hard to be partial. Your Excellency, let you question Hale. I'm not surprised he's been preaching at Andover lately. Speak nothing, Vandover. Paris prays with him. That's strange. Excellency, I wonder if it'd be wise to let Mr. Paris go continuously with the prisoners. I think he has a mad look about him these days. Mad? I did him good morning coming out of his house and he wept and he went his way. I don't think it wise the village sees him so unsteady. Perhaps he has some sorrows. I think it'd be the cows, man. Cows? There'd be so many cows wandering the high roads now their masters are in the jails, and much disagreement about who they belong to. I know Mr. Paris be arguing farmers all yesterday. There'd be great contention about the cows, ma'am. It were always a man to weep at contention. Oh, good morning, ma'am. Thank you for coming. I beg your pardon for waiting, sir. Good morning, Mr. Hawthorne. Reverend and Hale have no right to enter this. Excellent, see you a moment. You leave him alone with the prisoners. What's his business here? Excellency, hear me. It's the province of Reverend Hale's return to bring Rebecca Nurse to God. He bids her confess? Excellency, hear me. Rebecca the Nurse had not given me word this three months that she came. Now she said for him and her sister and Martha Corey and two or three others. And he pleads with them, confess their crimes and save their lives. Why, this is a province. And they soften? They soften? Not yet, not yet. But I thought to summon you, man. You might think of whether it would be not my suit. But a question, man. Mr. Paris, be plain. What troubles you? There's news. That the court, the court must reckon with. My niece, ma'am. My niece. I believe she's vanished. Vanished? I thought to advise you earlier in the week. Why? But How long is she gone? This week is for night. You see, ma'am, she said she was spending the night with Mercy Lewis, and the next day, when she's not returning, I sent Mercy Lewis to inquire. Mercy told him that she would sleep in my house for a night. They are both gone? They are, ma'am. I'll set a party for them. Where may we be? I think they'd be aboard a ship. My daughter helped and tells me how she heard them speaking of ships last weekend. Tonight I discovered my my stone box is broken into. She have robbed you? Thirty-one pounds is gone. I am penniless. Mr. Paris, you're a brainless man. Excellency, it's probably nothing you should blame me. I cannot think they would run off except they fear to keep in Salem anymore. Mark it. Abigail closed off to the town. It's this news of Andover. Andover is remedy. The court returns on our Friday and will resume examinations. I am sure, ma'am. The rumor here is because rebellion. There's no rebellion in Andover. I'll tell you what is said here now. Andover have thrown out the courts, they say, and we'll have no part of witchcraft. And there is a faction that's feeding on that news, and I fear there will be riot here. You riot? Why, at every execution, I see not the high cut faction in town. There's Hawthorne, another sword that hang till now. Rebecca Nurse is no Bridget Bishop that lived with. That lived with Bishop three years before she married him. And John Proctor is no Isaac Ward that and drank his family to ruin. I was a god it were not so. But these people have a great way yet in the village. Let Rebecca upon the gibbet in sense of righteous spirit, and I fear she'll make a vengeance on you. Yes, see, she's condemned to wait for you. How do you propose then? I would postpone the hangings for a time. There will be no postponements. Now, Mr. Hale's return. There is hope, I think, but even if he brings one of them to God, that confession surely damns the others to the public eye, and none may doubt that all others will need to help. 
this way, unconfessed and claiming innocent. Doubts are multiplied, and many honest people weep them, and their good purpose is lost in their tears. Cheever, give me the list. It cannot be forgotten, man, that when I summoned the congregation with John Parker's excommunication, there were hardly 30 people that came, that it speaks of discontent. There be no postponements. Excellency. Now, sir, which of these do you think may be brought to God? All my subs wipe them until dawn. Excellency, a dagger. What's that? Tonight, when I try to open my door, leave my house, a dagger clapped to the ground. You're going to hang this sword. There's danger for me. I dare step. I dare not step outside at night. Accept my congratulations, Reverend Pale. We are gladdened to see you return to your good work. You must pardon them. They're not right. You mistake me, sir. I cannot pardon these. What twelve for already hanged the same crime is not just. Some will rise in a few minutes, Excellency. I must have more time. Now hear me and beguile yourself with war. I'll not receive a single plea for pardon or postponement. Then thou not confess, we'll hang. Twelve are already executed. The names of seven are given out, and the village expects to see them die this morning. Postponement now speaks of floundering on parts. Reprieve or pardon was cast out on them that have died until now. While I speak God's law, I'll not crack its voice with whimpering. If retaliation is your fear, know this. I should hang ten thousand that dare to rise against the law, and an ocean of salt tears could not melt the resolution of the statutes. Now draw yourselves up like men, and help me, as you're bound by heaven to do. Mr. Hale, have you spoken with them all? All the Proctor, he's in the dungeon. What's Proctor's way now? He lived out he lived, except for his His wife. His wife must be a long child now. I know. What think you, Mr. Paris? You have a closer knowledge of this man. Might her presence soften him? It is possible. He has not laid eye on, eyes on her this month. I should summon her. Is he yet adamant? Has he shrugged at you again? Not, yeah, ma'am. Can't do all now. Fetch Goody Parker to me. I'll let you bring him up. Hi, Excellency, if you both spoke a week and published it in town that you are striving for their confessions, that's to be mercy on your part, not faltering. Mr. Hale, as God have not empowered me like Joshua to stop the sun from rising, so I cannot withhold from them the perfection of their punishment. If you think God will seem to raise rebellion, you're mistaken, Miss Danforth. You have heard rebellion spoken of in the town? I have seen orphans wandering from house to house, abandoned cattle bell on the high roads. The stink of rotting crops hangs everywhere. Can you wonder yet if rebellion's in smoke? Better you should marvel that they don't burn your province. Mr. Hale, have you preached in Andover this month? Thank God they have no need for me there. You baffle me, sir. Why do we turn here? Why, it is simple. I come to do the devil's work. I come to counsel men they should be lying themselves. There's blood on my head. Can't you see the blood on my head? Hush! Lady Proctor, I hope you're hearty. Yet six months before my time. Pray be at your ease. We come not for your life. Mr. Hale, we speak with the woman. Lady Proctor, your husband is more attending this morning. I know it. You know, do you not, that I have no connection with this court? If I could save your husband's life, I would. For if he is taken, I count myself as a murderer. Do you understand me? What do you want? Parker, I should not mistake your duty as I mistook my own. I came into this village like a bridegroom to his beloved, bearing high gifts of religion, the very crowns of holy law I brought. For what I touch with my bright confidence, it dies soon after. Beware, Goody Parker. Cleave to no faith when faith brings blood. Life, life, Goody Parker, life is God's most precious gift. And no sacrifice, however noble, may justify the taking of it. Prevail upon your husband to give his life. Will you plead with him? I cannot think he will listen to another. Think that be the devil's argument. I cannot dispute with you, sir. I lack the learning for it. Goody Proctor, I'm not summoned here for your disputation. You know why we tender it within you. He will die with the sunrise. Your husband. I understand that. What are you, stone? I tell you the truth, woman. Had I no other proof of your unnatural life, your dry eyes now would be sufficient evidence 
that you delivered of your soul to hell. A very ape would weep at such calamity. Has the devil dried up any tear pity within you? Take her out. Profit nothing she should speak with him. Let me speak with him. You yes. strive. Will you plead for his confession or will you not? I promise nothing. Let me speak with him. Pray, leave him, Excellency. Mr. Proctor, you have been notified, have you not? I see you like the sky, mister. Why don't you take counsel with your wife? And may God help you turn your back on hell. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Parker. I'm sure I've with you now. 